Welcome back to Unjustified, where we always speak the truth, the facts, on a very unbiased and sometimes unpopular opinion. Um, this is, what we're going to be listening to is Mark Jameson's interview. Mark is actually a very best friend of Chris. At the time of this interview, he said they had been best friends for 25 years, which means at that time... Chris would have been eight years old when they became friends. Um, Mark is not only a friend of Chris, he is also a good friend of the entire Watts family. He talks kind of highly of Chris's mother, says that she's a pretty easygoing lady. His interview is very interesting. I had a request to actually upload this video. I have had it in my archives for quite a while because I had it on my prior channel and I just hadn't thought about putting it up here. It's it's kind of a short interview, but it does say a lot. It really does. And we've all got that child that our kids grew up with, and we kind of consider them like our kid too. You know what I mean? Like my son's got a friend that he's had since he was eight years old, and they're still best friends till this day. And as I've said before, um, him and Chris are the same age so I that's a long time and I understand where Mark's going with that because my son's best friend he actually considers me a second mom because I was always that mom that wanted my kids at my house and if they wanted to be with their buddies then their buddies could come to my house but I wasn't always really big to let them go everywhere so most of their friends kind of grew up in my house with my kids so yeah and it sounds like from the way Mark is talking that's kind of the same situation him and Chris is so he would know Chris on a level that probably no one else knows him on really when you grow up with somebody they just they know you so um, he says a lot of things that that I think is very interesting. Um, I'm not going to give anything away right now in case any of you haven't heard it. Okay, guys, listen to the interview, and then, uh, as always, let me know what you think. And at the end of this video, I'll give my two cents. Sailor, I'm an agent with the Colorado Bureau of Investigation. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, sir. How about yourself? I'm um, doing good, thanks. Hey, the reason I'm calling is uh, we're doing some follow-up on the Watts case, and it's my understanding that you are a friend of theirs. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. Would you have a couple minutes to, to speak to me about it? Uh, yes. Okay. First of all, let me get, just get some identifying information from you. Uh, what is your last name? My last name is Jameson. How do you spell? J-A-M-I-E-S-O-N. Okay. And date of birth for you? Is this the best phone number to get to a hold of yet? Yes, it is. Okay. okay. And how so about how did, you, how did you know um, Shannon and Chris? Uh, me and Chris have been uh, best friends for almost... 25, 30 years. Um, so I've been uh, in and out of their lives quite a bit over the years. I've met Shanann on multiple occasions. I've met their daughters multiple occasions. And me and Chris would stay in uh, contact uh, via a phone call or a text message um, or if they, uh, we'd go see each other. Okay. So were you friends with Chris before he met Shanann? Yes, I was. Okay. Oh, yeah, I guess for 25 years you would be, huh? Yeah. You guys grew up together then? We did. Okay. 
So did you live in North Carolina then? Yes. Okay. I'm going to take you out. I believe when, uh, yeah, I, I'm in the Navy, so I got stationed out here. In, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. When's the last time you talked to Chris? I talked to him, uh, I think it was Tuesday before uh, that Wednesday he had confessed. And it was just through a text message. Okay. But that was the last time I had contacted him. Did you initiate that or did he? I initiated it. Okay. And was there like a back and forth conversation or how did that go? No, it was uh, just me basically saying, uh, I hope he's okay, I hope the family's okay, um, that I knew he was busy and he's probably got a lot going on, and um, that if he needed to speak to me or if he needed anyone to talk to, uh, he could let me know. And then he just reached back and said, uh, thanks, man, and yeah, he's he's been busy. Right. And that was it. Okay. So before that, when's the last time you had a, like a conversation with him? Uh, before that, uh, right off the top of my head, uh, it was also a text message, uh, and it was about, I want to say, a week and a half before this incident happened. Um, and, uh, yeah, again, it was just through text message. And I was basically telling him, like, hey, man, you know, reach out to me, like, talk to me. And he, you know, he would text me back, but it, he never called me, and we never saw each other. Okay. Yeah. Was that unusual? No, I just knew he was busy. I just knew he had a lot of uh, things going on. Uh, just because the things that were going on with the family at the time, I just I could tell like he was busy, and I knew. I didn't press him. I didn't put any uh, pressure on him. I just just letting him know I'm here to talk if you need to talk. And, okay. Yeah. And he said he would. He just didn't reach out. Okay. And I'm just just for my clarification, this is the text message before the, the they went missing. Yes. Okay. Yes. So what kind of family things were going on? Uh, I just uh, knew that uh, his mom, Cindy, were fighting again because uh, Cindy had called me and told me that they had started fighting again. And and I kind of was a little upset with Chris because I texted Chris and just let him know, like, hey, man, this has got to stop. Like, you know, I'm tired of hearing this. And he reached back and reached back to me and said he understood. He knew what was going on. And. He kind of clued me in on uh, him and Shanae are, are going to separate and get a divorce. And, and that's when I told him, like, well, I'm here if you need to talk, man. And and he said he would reach reach out to me some more, but he never really did after, after that. Okay. Yeah. What did uh, what were uh, Shanae and Cindy fighting about? Um, I, she said that, uh, and this is coming from Cindy, that um, uh, CC had a uh, food allergy to chocolate, and I guess CC ate a whole bowl of Hershey Kisses, and uh, Shanann uh, came into the living room and was just yelling at Cindy and, you know, telling her she's trying to kill her baby or something like that about because of the, the food allergy, and Cindy had no idea, and she claimed she had no idea about it, and uh, they had this huge, huge argument, and she ended up kicking Shanann out of the house, telling her, you know, to leave. And then shortly after that, Cindy called me crying and afraid because she was afraid she had just lost Chris, that, you know, Shanann was going to, you know, turn Chris against her, like like what have, has happened in the past. And, okay. Um, so she had called me crying and just letting me know, and, and that's when I just text Chris, like, hey, man, like, what's going on, dude? And, uh, and yeah. Okay. Well, you said that... Uh in the past, Shanann's turned Chris against Cindy. What? What? Can you tell me about that? Uh, yeah. So, um, right around the time when they were engaged, I believe uh, Chris and Shanann were engaged. This huge, huge fight between Cindy, Jamie, and uh, Shanann was taking place, and uh, they all felt like Shanann was trying to turn Chris against the family. And for a little bit there, Chris was on Shanann's side, you know, not really defending his family. But I guess over the, the course of a year or two, they ended up patching things up, and um, they finally made amends, and okay. uh, they had to back to a talking relationship again. And okay. Then this happened, and so it was like it was we were basically going back to square one. Gotcha. 
And so, could you tell was was Chris taking Shanann's side again in the fight about the the food allergy thing? Yeah. yeah so uh, Cindy did say that Chris uh, initially was on uh, Shanann's side, like he was uh, upset with his family. But then, uh, out of nowhere, Cindy did text me or call me again and say that uh, Chris has decided to separate from Shanann. Okay. And then all of a sudden, like, it was Chris, he he was even telling me during the text messages that uh, he had seen the true side of Shanann and that he is done. He doesn't want to be with her anymore. And and so we were like, okay. And that's so I was like, hey, man, I'm here if you want to talk. You know, I understand this is going to be a big, big process. So right. just let me know, man. And he never, he, just, he said he would, but he never reached out. Okay. Do you know what he meant by that when he said he saw the, the true side of Shanann? Uh, I didn't, I didn't ask because I didn't feel like it was my position to dig but i had assumed that he had seen because for years his family has always assumed that shenan has been pretty shady um and i never really saw it but they all uh, had reason to believe that she was very very there was something about her and chris said he had finally seen whatever his family had seen he had uh, finally okay. seen that side of her and yeah do you know what it was that the family was seeing in her uh she was just to, this is what they were telling me is that she was very shady. She had a dark past, like, um, I don't know, like sleeping with her old boss and even while she was seeing Chris and money issues with her boss. Um, she was just very uh, conniving, and that was what they were telling me. Now, when I, I saw Shanann, I didn't see any of that. Like, she was always uh, very pleasant. Okay. Yeah. So you never had any issues with Shanann? No, I mean, I never saw that side. I didn't really trust her just because of a lot of things that were being said. Right. Um, uh, yeah, but, I again, I never actually physically saw anything. Okay. Sorry, my pen just died. I had to find another one. Um, so he never really gave specifics about what he he saw or the reason he was wanting to separate? He did not. Um, I was basically letting him know about the conversation that I had with his mother, uh, just cluing him in on uh, what his mom was saying about Shanann, and he was... No, not really confirming it, but confirming it that yeah, I've seen that that part of Shanann, and but he never said exactly what he saw. He just said I've seen that that side of her. I've seen the true side of her, and I'm done. Okay. I'm like okay. Um, in your conversations with Chris recently, have you noticed any any change in in him? Uh, no, just uh, in his eyes, I could tell he looked uh, stressed. He looked wore out. Uh, but he's he's always been Chris. He's never been um, anything but that. Like no signs of um, a dark side to him or anything. Chris has always been a nice guy. Always been uh, a good guy. He's a, he's been a great friend. Okay. Even when I saw them in uh, San Diego, Chris was still um, still Chris. Like he was your average typical Chris. Yeah. How long ago was that? That was, I believe that was in June, or no, not June, excuse me, uh, July. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but they came down for a trip, uh, for a company trip. And oh, okay. They only stayed for like a weekend, but I went down to see them uh, one day. Okay. Are you pretty close to San Diego? I am. Okay. I've never heard 29 about, miles. About, it's in the middle of the desert and it sucks. But, uh, oh really? I'm about three hours. Yeah, I'm about three hours from San Diego. Oh okay. So you're in the Navy in the middle of a desert. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm a Navy corpsman, so we're stationed with the Marine Corps. Oh. Okay. Uh, anytime that yeah, we do their medical, so uh, we have to. Uh, uh, yeah, so we have to uh, we do their medical for them. Um, but so anytime the Marines, wherever the Marines go, we go. Gotcha. And they give me orders out here to the desert. Okay. So what was your opinion of Shanann, Shanann then? Uh, initially, I liked her. Uh, I remember when Chris first met her, um, 
he was so excited about it, and I was excited for him. But over the years, you know, like I said, the family had really, uh, Chris's family had really uh, had an issue with her, and she had, she had an equal issue with his family. And uh, it's just kind of, I started to get the uneasy feeling that they were getting. But again, like I never really saw anything that they were seeing because I, I think they were more close to her than I was. You know, I was just Chris's friend, and they're the family. They, they're on that constant form of contact. But for me, every time I was there, I went to their house, or they would come see me, or we would text or talk. Like they were always good. You know, they were always they always seemed fine. And Shanann never really exhibited anything that they were claiming, but there was always, you know. After a while, there was that uneasy feeling about her, like something has to be there if everyone's got such a right. problem with her. Okay. But you, you know? never saw anything yourself? But I never I never actually saw it. Okay. Did Chris ever tell you about any of those things that he also saw in her that her family was talking about? He, he did not. Okay. And again, I didn't, I didn't press because I didn't want to, like, you know, dig into his personal right. life. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. And obviously, you liked Chris because you were friends with him for 25 years. But what what can you tell me about him? Uh, Chris, uh, he has always been a quiet guy. Uh, he he only opens up to the people that he's comfortable with. Um, he's the type of guy that would do anything for you. He'd bend over backwards for you, and if he's been there for me multiple times when I went through uh, issues with relationships or whatever. Like Chris is, uh, he's been a brother to me, you know, big time, and I still love him as a brother. Like. Yeah, this all comes as a shock, but still, like, Chris is a good guy. And the way the media is painting him out to be, this, that's not Chris at all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he loved his daughters very, very much. Do you ever know him to have a temper? I have never seen uh, a, a mean side to Chris ever. Okay. He's much like his mother. His mother's very uh, kind-hearted and sweet-hearted, and Chris is relatively the same way. So obviously he would, would come to you and talk to you when he was having issues in his life. What, what other ways did he have, that, do you know, that to, to deal with conflict or, or issues in his life? Uh, for these past couple of years, uh, him and I haven't really talked much. I would say like the past uh, three or four years, but... If he was truly going through something uh, serious, he definitely would have reached out to me. But I know he also had support wherever he was in, in Colorado. There was also his uh, friend base that he had in Colorado that I'm sure he probably reached out to them more than he did with me. But, um, yeah, but ultimately his, his whole, to my understanding, his whole routine was basically just go to work and take care of the girls. Okay. Do you know who his friends are here in Colorado? I do not. Okay. I've never met any of them. Okay. How about any, how about any other friends of, of his that you know of that we could talk to? Uh, off the top of my head, I, I honestly don't know. Okay. Because I think a lot of the people he knew... Uh, Shanann had known. I'm sorry, say that again? I think I said that uh, a lot of the people that Chris knew, oh. Shanann knew. They were Shanann's friends. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else that you think we should know about either Chris or Shanann or their relationship or the girls or anything else? Uh, not that I can think of. Any questions that I haven't asked that you think we should we should be asking, or anybody else that you think we should be talking to? Um, I'm sure you guys have already reached out to his family or his sister. And yeah, yeah, we're in. Okay. Then yeah, I think that would pretty much cover it, unless uh, you guys could track down whoever his friends were in, in Colorado. Okay. Like the you know, the friends of their families. I right. I don't know who they were friends with, but okay. All right. Well, if you got like a pen and paper, I'll give you my contact information in case something comes yeah. to mind. Uh, 
Okay, go ahead. Uh, my name is Matt Saylor, S-A-I-L-O-R. Okay. Just like the Navy. <laughs> yeah, right on. And uh, I'm an agent with the Colorado Bureau of Investigation, CBI. Do you have a phone number? Okay. Yep, 303. Okay. So if any other information comes to mind, you know, something you think we should know, something you forgot about, or other people you think we should be talking about, uh, feel free to reach out to me and give me a call. Um, We'd like to have as much information as possible, so anybody that we can talk to would be good. Absolutely. Uh, I do have a question for you, um, and without you, I guess, divulging anything that you can't, um, could, am I expected to be appearing in court or anything just because I have to let my chain of command know that they're already tracking about this, this issue, and I just have to let them know if I'm going to be making an appearance? I wouldn't anticipate that. Um, obviously, those decisions are made. Um, by the district attorney, um, yeah. but um, and I, you know, I can't say what they're, what evidence they're going to use, what witnesses they're going to use. But um, yeah, you know, it's not like you have um, any, you know. I mean, it's all important information, but it's not, you know. Yeah, like is it going to make them guilty? So, yeah. 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 Um, so I mean, you're you'll go into my report um, as a witness just because I talked to you, but. Um, I wouldn't anticipate you being having to be called for trial. Okay. But I can't rule it out, obviously, so. Right, right. Any other questions I can answer or try to? Uh, that's it. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, I appreciate your time. Um, appreciate you talking to me today. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, thank you, sir. Have a good day. Yeah. All right, you too. All right, thanks. Bye. Yep, yeah. bye-bye. Well, what did you think? I think Mark's a pretty sincere guy. I think that he is telling the truth about everything he's saying. The truth is he knows it. He mentioned that Cindy had called him about the whole nutgate thing, but she told him it was chocolate. She didn't. It doesn't sound like that she actually told him the truth about it being the peanuts. Now, we know now for sure that Cindy has made that comment about chocolate because she'd done an interview recently with another YouTuber. She did mention that it was chocolate in that interview too. So I don't want to go too far out on a loop here, but it almost sounds like Cindy likes to play the victim in every role. Um, rolls with her son I, and I don't know I could be wrong there because you don't hear much from them and you it's just very little that you hear from the Watts family and I am not putting anybody down okay I'm just stating what I feel like um, she called Mark to tell him that Shanann and Chris were getting a divorce I think she stepped out of line right there. I don't think that was her place to call and tell him that. Um, that should have been Chris. If that same situation happened with my son, that would be his place to call and tell his friend he's getting a divorce, not mine. That part's kind of odd. I don't, I think Cindy steps out of line right there. Well, maybe she feels like Mark's her son too. You know, I've always felt that if it's not your place to say anything, then don't. It's not your business. Now, if somebody just comes out and asks you about it, if you have not been told don't say anything, then I find it being okay to say, well, I don't know. I know that they were talking about it or whatever, but you shouldn't just call and blurt it out and, hey, guess what's happening, you know, because that's not her place. That's my opinion. So, see, I think she kind of stepped out of line right there as well. And I think it was kind of odd her calling him to tell him about Nutgate. At the same time, now, that situation, if she had told the whole truth about it, I'm not going to say that's not something I might do. If I just completely couldn't stand my daughter-in-law, and it's obvious Cindy could not stand Shanann for whatever reasons, and I'm not even getting into that. I'm just saying, if I just couldn't stand my daughter-in-law, and I thought she was just the worst thing that ever happened to my son, I can't say... I might not do that because sometimes friends have a way of persuading our kids more than we do, right? 
And so I think that was her plan right there. I think she'd done that with Mark to get him to talk to Chris and try to persuade Chris away from Shanann because you know, they do. My son, if I give him advice all day long, he'll listen to it and sometimes he'll take it. But when his friends say something, you know, then he'll listen a little harder because I'm mom and I'm always gonna be like, I'm watching out for everything for him. I hope you understand where I'm going with that. So with her calling Mark on that issue, I'm not gonna say that's too far out there because I would probably do the same thing if I hated my daughter-in-law that much, which is I don't, I love my daughter-in-law. She's great. That's a possibility I may do. But the whole calling him and telling him they're getting a divorce, that's ridiculous. That's not her place to do that. The nutgate thing, maybe, because that that did involve her and her house and her family. I can assure you she blew it out of proportion. But there again, I can't make that call. I wasn't there, so I can't say, okay, she just blew that plum out of proportion. You know, it wasn't that bad, and it wasn't that big a deal, and I don't know that. I wasn't there. I am hearing both sides. Actually, I'm hearing all three sides. Four now of Nutgate. You hear actually five, really. You hear Shanann's side through her um, text and everything, and you can tell that it very much bothered her on a very deep level. She was terrified for her child's life. Now that should put her as mom of the year, you know what I mean? Cindy should actually appreciate that she is that concerned about her grandchildren's health. You know, that should leave Cindy rest assured that Shanann is a damn good mom and watches out for her children immensely. You know, instead of blowing it up that Shanann's a bad guy, I don't think she's a bad guy for tripping out and freaking out over that because I would too. I'm just saying. So we've heard Shanann's side and then of course we've heard Cindy's side and we also heard Chris's side, which he really didn't know what in the hell happened, but he even acted like, to me, when he was talking to other people, he wasn't taking it that serious. But when he replied back to Shanann in the text, he acted like, oh, that's just terrible. And he said he cussed out his mom, but that shows me that Chris is two-faced, just saying that, that's obvious. He's gonna cuss his mom out, and then when he's talking to someone else, acts like it's not that big a deal. It tells me that he's just trying to show off in front of Shanann, cuss his mom out, and then tell her, and truthfully, I don't think Chris thought it was this bigger deal either, but it was, because there is proof that CC was very deathly allergic to tree nuts. That is not any sort of hypochondriac, that's nothing, that is fact. There is pictures of CC where she's broke out in big whelps while she was at the doctor's office being tested for the tree nut. So, you know, that is fact. She absolutely was. It's even in her autopsy report. So, anything you've heard that that was ridiculous and she's just overreacting about that and she kept peanut butter in her house and all this and that. Listen, she was. Believe me, I saw all the proof in the world that that baby was deathly allergic to tree nuts. And by the way, peanut butter is not tree nuts. Tree nuts is nuts that grow on a tree. Peanuts grow in the ground. But anyways, we've also heard Mark's side of that story and of course, Miss Rusick's side of that story. Miss um, Rusick's a mom, you know, and she's just like a down-to-earth mother. And I think Miss Rusick was not very happy with it whatsoever. And she was very upset about, about it. Obviously, that's her grandchild. At the same time, she didn't call Cindy and, and cuss her out and make a big scene because she knew her daughter had already handled it. So she stayed out of it, which is exactly what Cindy should have done when she was talking about the divorce. She shouldn't have called Mark and done that. But anyway, I think Mark is a sincere guy. I think he's telling it straight as he sees it. I don't think he's trying to cover up or hide anything for anyone. When he talks about Chris being a good guy and this and that, I believe that too. 
because I too believe Chris was a really good guy until he wasn't. Period. That's the way I think. And Chris had also mentioned Mark in his prison interview. Um, he mentioned him pretty good bit when they went to San Diego, which is where Mark lives. He went and seen Mark, and he says he wished he would have told Mark about Nikki because he feels like Mark would have told him, no, stay away, don't fall into that trap. And he says he would have probably listened. So see, there you go. Obviously, Chris would listen to Mark more than he would listen to Cindy. So that's why Cindy called Mark to tell Mark about Nutgate. Because I think Chris at that point had already called and cussed her out about it or texted or however he handled it. And I think she thought if she called Mark, then Mark would call Chris and tell him something like, you know, that's your mom. You don't need to be talking to your mom that way. It was a mistake. It was an accident. I think Cindy's thought process there was Mark would call Chris and then Chris would start thinking about what Mark said because Mark thinks of Cindy as a second mom too. So Mark's going to defend Cindy over Shanann. Now this is what I'm thinking Cindy thought, the whole reason she called Mark. And I don't think any of that happened. I think Mark did call Chris but and said, look, y'all need to get your shit together because this is getting old, your mom calling me. I mean, you know, so it really didn't work out for Cindy what I truly believe she had planned and why she called Mark to begin with. You know, and there again, I'm not going to say that I wouldn't have done the same thing because I probably would have because my kids tend to listen to their friends before they will me on certain things. So, yeah. You guys let me know what you think. Think in the comments. I'm going to work to get more of these interviews up. You know, I have people asking me a lot, do you have this interview or do you have that one? So, I'm going to work on getting all the ones I still have up here because obviously a lot of people hasn't heard all these interviews and they are very important. And so I hope you all have a great day, great night, great evening, wherever you're at. And until next time, hope you enjoyed the video.